Talking about how to fight with a Joe. In this case, a Japanese Joe is the medium length walking stick. This one's an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's made out of oak, red oak. It's very hard wood. It's very heavy. It hits extremely hard. This one, the Japanese Joe, is in the link below. If you want to get a uh, Japanese Joe, go to the martial arts link. That's the first one. That's the store. Or use a walking stick or a hiking stick. It's the same basic moves. So let me show you how to get started. You're gonna put your hand in the middle of your staff, and I want you to always do a warm up that also strengthens the grip in the forearm. When you learn how to defend yourself against a street fight, multiple attackers, a knife attack, self defense against knife attack, or multiple attackers, using your Joe or your walking stick, I don't want you to lose the staff out of your hand, especially if they've got a knife or there are multiple people. Maybe they've got that, uh, they're swinging their skateboard at you. The last thing you want is to be able or to try to block, come in with a strike, and then have it fall out of your hands because your grip is too weak. So start here, warm this up. This is also going to keep you safe from injury during this workout. Your hand is just in the middle of that medium sized staff or your walking stick or a hiking stick, and you're just turning back and forth. You're gonna get stronger faster when you do a little bit at a time. 30 seconds there, 30 seconds here. Just twisting back and forth. Nice, easy move. And now you're gonna go into the second warm up exercise. And the second exercise is different for this size weapon than it is for a longer size stick. For the long martial arts staff or the bow, the Japanese bow, a lot of these moves don't work, it's just too long. But on this one, this is a warm up move. This is gonna train your hands how to move on the staff without coming off. So you're gonna start with one hand on each side. You're gonna slide this one in. This one comes over the top. You're gonna to turn it, slide it out, slide it out. This is also gonna help you with spatial awareness and proprioception. When you learn how to fight with a Japanese Joe or a walking stick or how to defend yourself with a Joe or a walking stick or a hiking stick, Doing motions like this will really improve proprioception, your handling of your staff. So don't skip this part. This staff is a little tacky this morning, or maybe it's my hands, but it doesn't matter. You need to fight through. You want to try to get a good balance, allowing it to turn, and you can go back and forth and go one way and then the other way, but effort at this. Go after this for 30 seconds as part of your warm-up. Again, your hands are starting the end. One hand is palm up, one hand is palm down. They meet in the middle, they turn. The one that was down comes out, and then your goal is to try to get that to happen simultaneously so that the hands are moving at the same time. And you're gonna feel that. That's gonna work your shoulders, your hands a little bit, so it's great for the warm up. Now, the third thing that you're gonna do with your Joe or your walking stick, self defense techniques, fighting with the Joe is you're gonna have it in front of your body. Yes, it's good to see you. I said I'd be right back. I had to take care of somebody at the door real quick and I wanted to pick up the Joe. So we're fighting with the Joe or your walking stick for self-defense. You're now going to start to spin. Now the spin for this weapon is not a frivolous spin. None of the spins really are frivolous. Hello, it's good to see you again, John. We're using the Joe or the hiking stick, the walking stick. The reason for the spin on this one is to strengthen the grip like it is with the longer staff, the bow, but it's also a self-defense move. Someone's coming in for the attack. We're going to call this bag the attacker. This first motion, just turning your pinky down and turning it over, using drawing with your hand, pulling your hand into your body creates a lot of speed, a lot of power, and because you have leverage, you're here, and the length is here, it's going faster at that tip, and it's going to destroy for self-defense. It's gonna destroy their hand, they're coming in with a knife, maybe you're gonna to have to hit them in the head, and from here, your whole body turns, and then you're pulling it back through on the other side. Now they both become very powerful strikes, and you're gonna practice them, get behind your staff, make your body a smaller target, Protect your vital spots, and then turn and pull back. Now, this is exactly the same as a bow spin, a figure eight. The difference is 
you have a short, very short side and the long side. You're coming here, stomach up and in, abs tight, bring the other hand up. Whichever hand has the staff, that foot should be forward. You're gonna do this for 30 seconds. And again, this is my heavy, heavy, heavy Joe. It's an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's made out of that red oak, very heavy, very strong. It's not indestructible, nothing is, right? But it's pretty, it's pretty good for self-defense. You can also be using a walking stick. You can be using a walking cane, like a straight cane. I do a lot of the crook canes, but here's the answer. Some of you ask me, what I would do if I have the cane with the ball on the end? What do I do if I have a cane that has like a little skull there? You've seen those, right? Or that blackthorn cane. What if you're using a shillelagh? It's a little bit shorter and there are different techniques, but that works and that works on all of those situations, a hiking stick. So you do that for 30 seconds per hand, switching to the other side, slow as smooth, smooth as fast, gradually increase the speed by squeezing your stomach up and in, abs tight. And because you have the long side and the short side, this is actually gonna be a better workout for your arms, your shoulders, your wrists, your forearm, than spinning that figure eight with the bow staff because it's, a, it's a, like a levered weight. You're now moving more strength, more power, uh, more resistance, because the length is here. And I'm not an engineer, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Turning it here and back, this will get you, it'll get your heart rate up faster than you do with the, the longer staff. Now that's three basic spins that I wanna get right into strikes for self-defense. And I know that first spin also serves as a strike if you need it. I like something that's more basic, more direct. I say immediately, immediate, direct, and explosive. From here, I'm going to point my thumb right at the attacker. Adrish, if we have time, we'll get to that one next. I'm gonna point this here, and I'm going to slide through the front hand. This is gonna be a guide now. It's kind of like a pull cue, right? You can play and pull, but I'm going to slide this through wherever I point the front hand. That's where the back hand is going to go. The back hand is doing the work of forcing all of that energy through their spine, through their stomach, through their throat, their face for self-defense. So you're starting here. Make yourself a smaller target. I'm a big person. This is a wide target. All my vital spots are exposed. I step back. Or if you need to, step in. The idea on this one is that this hand is between me and the threat. So this is the front hand. From here, I step back. I point my thumb. That turns this and pushes it right into my back hand, which is ready. And I simply thrust. From here, thrust. And when you practice, like everything else for self-defense, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, slow at first. And then before you're done, you have 30 seconds Harder and faster. I missed it that time. Harder and faster. A lot of times when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm look, watching you and not the thing. You should always be watching the target. From here to here, thrusting harder and faster. Think about your target's eyesight, uh, ability to breathe per temporarily, permanently for self-defense. Breathe, smashing, put them on the floor, wherever you have to hit them. That works no matter how tall or how short your target is, wherever your target is. Now, the next strike is going to be if it's in your backhand, because I want you to know right from the start, it doesn't matter if it's here or if it's here. You're still able to defend yourself. You simply have to do a different technique. From here, point the thumb and thrust. If it's in the backhand, the pinky comes up. Point the pinky, right? or lift and thrust. So from here, lift, thrust. One, two. Which one's better? Neither one. They're different techniques. This one is very effective. If it's in your backhand, it's very effective. Now, why would it be in the front hand or the backhand? Because this is your walking stick. This is your hiking cane or your hiking stick. This is a straight cane. You're using usually the same hand. You're walking like this. Okay, and you might be stepping with that right foot. In that case, that's forward. You might be stepping with the left foot 
in case, in, you know what I'm saying, in that case, it's in the back hand. So it's, it's whether it's in the front hand or it's in the back hand, doesn't matter. And it won't, uh, it's not going to trip you up and it's not going to stop you from being able to effectively defend yourself with that Joe, the Japanese Joe, or the walking cane or the hiking stick or whatever it is. So practice both. Point the thumb, thrust. Lift, thrust. Then, the third thing I want to show you, and I saw this, I've seen this every morning for the last few weeks. There's a gentleman in my neighborhood who has two little fluffy dogs, and he walks them in a uh, stroller. You can picture it, right? That happens a lot down here in sunny South Florida. A lot of old people, no offense old people, it's young people too. They walk their dogs in strollers, baby strollers. That's good. It's good for the baby care industry. They're selling lots of strollers, I guess. Anyway, he's out. <laughs> I got off on a tangent. I'll get back on topic. You're wa he's walking with his stick in his hand like this. And he's not the first guy that I've seen do that. I saw another guy in the neighborhood, also with a little fluffy dog, who was walking without his dog in his stick. And I asked my wife, who walks all the time. Thank you. I appreciate that. I said, why... Are these old gentlemen, and I'm talking like 70s, 80s, why are they walking out there with a stick? It was about, it was about this length. It looked like a piece of wood they got from the store. Yes, I appreciate that, Idris. Um, some other dog on a leash attacked their little dog, and they're angry, and they can't walk the dog in the little, in the stroller anymore, because the other dog can jump up and yip them and, the other owner won't take care of the dog, whatever. They don't feel safe. That's the point. These old guys don't feel safe because the guy, and it's not because the little dog attacked their little dog. It's because the owner of the other little dog got mouthy, and he's a younger man. And now they're carrying a stick to protect themselves. It's the same reason that you're thinking about carrying a stick for self-protection. Now, hopefully they don't get out there battling each other in, in our fancy neighborhood with their canes and such, right? Or their sticks, their walking sticks. But yeah, th and this is the traditional way to carry the joke. So, um, uh, absolutely, John. So th this, is, this is the way that most people carry it. If, if they're, they know about the Joe and they carry it for, like, uh, for practice, right? Or whatever. Police officers in Japan learned the Joe in the 30s and the 40s, all kinds of techniques, spiraling, all these cool things that I love to do when I train and that I like to teach you when you're in person. And I'll teach you on these videos, but for right now, I want you to think about how can you immediately go to the uh, hardware store, get a dowel rod, sand it down, put some oil in it, maybe stain it, get oak if you can, hardwood or poplar. And now you have a self-defense tool. You can carry with you wherever you go or your walking stick or a cane or whatever. So, but this, so this is the third way from here. The threat comes in, backhand, front hand, doesn't matter. You're just gonna come into the other hand. Now you have two hands on it. From here, you can thrust, you can strike, you can strike. Now there are small movements that I'm doing. When I thrust, I'm letting this hand come back a little bit and I'm turning my hands over. When I'm striking, I'm bringing this hand down a little and I'm gonna bring this hand down a little so that I have more length when I strike here but I don't want you to overthink it. I don't want you to spend so much time on it that you get smashed while you're thinking. You can bring this here and come through. Now see my hands are facing the same direction. When I was here, they're the opposite direction. They're all correct. Just the idea is, if you're gonna carry it this way, get the other hand onto it. Here is that strike. You can bring it down and across. You can bring it up and into their stomach and it all works. This one is, uh, 50 inches. So if you go below and you look in the store, this is the 50 inch Joe. Traditionally a Joe is 54 inches. This one's a little short, but I like it just because it's so heavy and it's hard. I just don't have, I have some great Joes in Ohio. I haven't got them down here yet. I don't think they're ever coming. Uh, somebody's supposed to send them to me. He hasn't yet, but um, the next time I get up there, I'll grab one of them. I'll grab my favorite from here. Point and thrust backhand lift and thrust carrying one hand put the other hand on it strike strike thrust all those strikes are correct or put it in this hand
strike like a sword, strike, strike, strike. Don't overthink it. Learn practical things first, and then you can learn, you know, all of the, the fancy things that, that you see, the uh, soburi, the, um, all the strikes and blocks and, and spins and moves and twists and turns and all the cool things that you do traditionally in Jodo, the Jo martial art, or if you're an Aikido person, Aikidoki or whatever they call them, and you use the Jo along with the Boken for self-defense. And, and learn those. If that's your passion, learn it. Get better at it than I am. I haven't traditionally trained with anybody in a long time who is teaching me. I, there's a lot that I can learn. I don't know everything. And I love when you guys know things or I forget things and you mention them or I don't know things and you say them and I go look them up or you tell me and that makes sense, then I learn. That's why this is a community. Don't ever follow an instructor who says they know everything. I've never met, I've met some brilliant martial artists too, and I've trained with um, so many brilliant, brilliant, brilliant martial artists. The smartest ones never are definitive. That means they never say, this is the only way you can do it. They always say, well, this is, this is the way that I know, this is the way I learned, this is what works for me. Learn everything you can, find what works, but um, don't jump around so fast. Make sure you get really good at one thing and then go learn something else and add to what you know. And then when you find something that's contradictory, understand if it's contradictory because it's different or because it's just plain wrong. Sometimes they'll just be plain, like, oh, okay. When they did that, they didn't understand. It's like uh, military tactics. What worked in 1700s does not work now. Guys lining up, marching, all in mass. They don't, those guys compared to 200 years before when it was all swords and knives or whatever, then the guns came. And now you've got machine guns, and then you've got robots now, and drones, and planes, and stuff. Everything changes, and so does martial arts. You have to have that um, flexibility. Stay flexible. All right, back to the training, because I wanted to show you just one more thing, and that is how to use a small space and practice and build lots of strength in your core, and your strikes, to make your strikes so hard and fast that when you hit somebody, they, they stop. I said this in the earlier video. I want you to develop stopping power, stopping power. So, uh, thanks T. Stopping power looks like this. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you the stopping power. Practicing for stopping power. I, I lift it up a little bit, just so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use just the square that I'm in. The floors, the mats that I have are little squares. They're two feet by two feet. So I'm not going out of two feet by two feet. And I'm doing this because you might be in shutdown. You might be in quarantine. Not because you've got anything, but because that's what the city says or the people are saying. And so you have to train inside. I want you to be able to practice over and over. Get a deep sweat. And I want you to get one thing from this practice. The purpose of this practice for you today is I want you to develop this line. Not this line, not this line, not this line. Meaning that if the threat is here, they're coming at you, right? They wanna, maybe it's a knife, maybe it's a bottle, maybe it's a, they're trying to either hit your head, get into your uh, vital organs, they wanna hit your body. Yeah, small space. That's what we have right now, right? And I'm gonna assume that you have high, uh, average height ceilings. So you don't have to have super high ceilings. You're gonna start with the, cane, uh, the cane. Start with the uh, Joe or your walking stick or your walking cane in your left hand and put your left foot forward. Turn your thumb to the threat. From here, I want you to thrust and bring it back. Bring it to your shoulder and strike and bring it back. Push through the back hand. And I know I'm facing this way because my target's over here. I'm gonna get that back in here. So, so you can see what it looks like. So this is me squared to the target. I'm gonna step back in this case, point my thumb, push, strike, strike. Now, I didn't move forward with my feet. If I really want to do maximum damage, I can step forward and strike, but that's for self-defense. I wanna show you how to get ready and get better at that. So you're gonna stand behind it. Let me lower a little bit. And you're gonna, you're gonna uh, wear yourself out with this. So from here, Thrust, 
strike, strike. Put it down and then immediately switch your feet because I want you to be ambidextrous. That's the beauty of the Joe or the walking stick, self-defense, a hiking stick, is that you can use it on both sides equally. Point your thumb, thrust, angle, angular strike here. And this is, you can see if I'm bringing it from my shoulder, I don't have to have a super high ceiling. Now I have high ceilings here, but they're not super, super high. They're average, high, they're, they're, uh, they're about as high, they're probably not as high as my house actually. A lot of houses down here in South Florida, they, they're small, but they make a high ceiling. It looks like they're bigger, right? So from here, and then I slide and come forward. And I need to show you that you point your thumb. The first one is a thrust. And I want you to practice two ways, turning your hand over and pushing through, and then put those together. So you're going to push through, and at the end, turn your hands over and lock. Bring it down at this angle from the shoulder. And then the front hand slides up and then closes so that the back hand can slide up as as you come through. Now in the back hand sliding up is also pushing and that increases the length, the length of the stick from here to here. And it exponentially increases the speed of the strike. So you're pushing, it's not just turning, it's pushing and sliding as you turn. And then you put it in the other hand. When you start to do this, I'm not out of my Two, two by two, I push, strike, slide, other hand, push, angular strike, that's a horizontal strike, see how I don't take, I don't take this hand off until I make sure this hand is in the right spot, and I stand behind it, I want you to practice fighting behind your stick, fight behind your walking stick, or your hiking stick, or your joe, um, what was that guy? Morgan. Morgan from The Walking Dead. Any fans there? People tell me all the time, I, I got into this because of Morgan from The Walking Dead. Morgan from The Walking Dead, he's supposedly using a Joe. I watched the clips, though. He's, he's doing that four-square bow staff thing, which has nothing to do with the Joe. So I wanted to really show you. If Morgan had learned correctly from the Aikidoki, the Aikido master, he would be doing thrust, angle, and straight through and see how my hands are coming down and I get this one out and I put this one here one two three this will probably be the hardest part to get at first but it's not so hard that you're not gonna do it like like that um, email John or uh, regular mail the post office down here is slow was the email or regular mail Yeah, and it's, it's not about hitting the head because you might not be able to hit the head. It, it, you have to ask yourself. The question is, um, I'll check for it. I don't, I don't remember if I did or not. I may have. It's been a really crazy couple weeks. Uh, I'm trying to move this location. I'm running out of my runway. <laughs> I've been here for 18 months. Um, I, 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 I did a soft open gradually, and then my hard open was March. And like within a week, I was shut down for the COVID. And that lasted two or three months. And now people are just afraid. I had some people coming in recently. And then uh, they, a few of them said, hey, um, I'm going to wait till, the, till this, this second wave slows down. I'm, uh, you know, I just want to be cautious. And I get it. I'm, I'm okay with that. Be cautious. Protect yourself. Um, but what that means is I've got no income from in-person students. You guys are the only thing keeping me going. <laughs> so I need to have a studio and a space. So I've been really busy. I've been looking for other locations, other solutions. I'm meeting tomorrow with somebody in uh, just north of here. See if I can't move into, share some space, still make these videos, and kind of wait it out. Because, um, you know, I, they, they do another three-month, four-month shutdown. That's it. And it's all, you know, it all comes out of the, my pocket, basically. Uh, paying for rent when there's no... And it's, it's, like, it's like years ago when I was a kid. Yeah, it's hard on all... I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. It's just funny that like I started this industry. I lived in the martial arts school for my, with my instructor. Not with me. He didn't live there. He lived in a house. He was smarter than me. But I lived in the martial arts school for about six years. Got my own martial arts school. Lived there for 18 months. Made no money. 
Yeah, uh, they, they are, but not a, not a good replacement for the income. I mean, it's, not a, it's, it's a fraction. So I know a lot of people said, you know, at least we got the Zoom, Zoom calls. Well, people will only do that for so long, and they've, they've already started to say, yeah, you know, maybe I'll just buy a DVD or something. Not everybody. Loyal people will keep going. But anyway, so what I was saying was, years ago, when I was a young man, I lived on the floor, had a little RV sink. It was such a small little space, smaller than this one, and I'd wash, you know. Some of you know what they call that. I'd wash myself in the sink. I'd go to the, um, every couple, or every couple days, I'd go to a, the YMCA, and I'd get a good workout in, take a full shower, a regular shower. Only when I got sick would I get, uh, you know, I'd rent a hotel to sleep at night. And I, and I paid what I thought was paying my dues. It was just stupid at the time. But I thought I was doing the right thing, right? Train every day, a hard day, didn't make any money. But I lived in the school to keep it going for years. And uh, I can't do that now because I got kids and a wife. <laughs> so I've got to figure this. That was my whole point. Long story short, too late, as my wife likes to say. Uh, that's the whole point. Now, your question was about what else do you hit instead of the head? All the targets. Oh, it'll work out, uh, T. There's no question. I've got, um, I've got as much faith as you need. And it's not even faith. It's, um, wow, thank you, Adrish. I really appreciate that, man. And it's your birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday tomorrow. But I, um, it's, it's, it's action. I just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. What else are we going to do? All huddle in a cover, corner, and uh, hide? No. No way. One way or the other, I'll go um, clean toilets. I started doing that. I know how to do that. I'll keep doing that. But you, you won't stop me. And T, this thing can't last forever. They can't keep doing this to us, shutting us down, all that stuff. It'll end, and we'll come back so much stronger. And the ones like us who will dig in and fight, and, and, and maybe that's the whole point. Maybe uh, the universe, God, whatever you want to believe, is saying, you need to, you need to uh, get a little dirty again. You need to, you need to learn how to uh, sweep the leg again. You, need, you, you got too soft. You got too soft. You need to toughen it up. And I don't mind. I don't mind doing the work. All right. Anyway, the question was, instead of just the head, what else can you strike? The throat. For self-defense, that's fatal, right? That means that, that'll kill them. You go through their neck, into the solar plexus. Now this, that's the sternum. That bone holds the ribs together. All the organs are in there. But right below it is that soft spot, right where the diaphragm is. You hit that, that goes into a spasm. <laughs> they won't be able to catch their breath for a few seconds. You just strike in there. You can bring this straight down and shatter that arm. Maybe they're trying to punch or grab or strike. Then you go into the arm into the ribs, into the legs. If you stop them from being able to stand up and run and, well, what else are we gonna do? But I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. We always have a choice. Here, the final thing I'm gonna say, and then I'm gonna get back to work. Uh, your mind can imagine every negative thing that can possibly happen. And I made this mistake in this last, uh, uh, since March, because I'm thinking, why is this happening? Why is that? Happening? Why are they doing? Stop asking why. Doesn't matter. It's out of your control. It's like saying, "Why is it raining? Why is, um, yeah, I agree. Why is, uh, you know, why is there a drought? Why is it? we can't control the why? So respond to what's happening. What's happening? There's not enough rain. What do you have to do? Change the crops. Um, hike. Go get a bottle of uh, water from the the river, from the lake, move to a different location at the water. Yes, you have to be flexible and move. And if all you do is sit there staring at the sky, wondering why it's not raining, you'll starve to death. You'll cook in the sun. You'll die of thirst because the water dries up. Get up and move. Get out of there. Find a solution, right? And then, um, so, but I, but I was doing that. I was doing that. I made, I'm human. And I was thinking, why is it? Well, doesn't make any sense. Why would they do this? Why would they do <laughs> and, 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 and finally, my, my wife, who's smarter than me, pointed it out. She said, all you're doing is you're, you're putting yourself in these, these moods. Stop wondering why, why, why. And I said, okay, you're right. Um, and then you start saying, okay, if, it, if this is happening, this is the reality. It doesn't matter why. How do I survive? How do I adapt? How do I make the best of it? What are the things, what are the actions, not just the thoughts, 
not the attitude, not the positive thinking, not motivation, actions, Act, words and actions, words and actions, and mostly actions, because actions change things. Motion changes emotion. So this is back to what I was saying. So your brain can think of all the negative things or all the positive things. Oh, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. Or your brain can think about all of the positive things. If this happens, this is what I'm going to do. And, and even though everybody else is, you know, the, the shutdowns and the job loss and the, uh, everybody's going to die from the, the COVID, right? And if your, your mind can start thinking of that and you get, uh, you know, and it's like when the bully comes in. Most bullies, when they come up to somebody and they go like this, most people go like this. They, they freeze. There's fight, uh, fight or flight, they say, right? Thank you. I appreciate that. But it's not fight or flight. It's freeze. Freeze is the third one. Most people freeze. Most people cover up. Most people freeze. And then they just get pummeled. And the bully never gets any resistance. But here, the bully is your own mind. And the bully's coming up like this. All the things, all the images they're showing, you know, in, in the, the media, the news apps, CNN and MSNBC, and all those, they want you to, Fox, all of them. I'm not saying there's one better than the other. They want you to come back and stay and study it and read everything because they're showing the ads. And, and everybody thinks it's a big conspiracy. It's not. It's just they're making a lot of money off of you and me because we can't stop being afraid. It's like the, the hurricane's coming. Or in Ohio, it was the tornadoes. Everybody's going to die. Well, what you think is going to happen almost never does. All the bad things almost never happen. And in most cases, never happen. And so if you, if you just wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, the whole time you're like this. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And then when the bully comes up and you're doing this, they just start beating you and beating you and beating you, right? They grab you with one hand and there's a whole crowd of them. And they're out there smashing on you. But if you put your hands up and you're like, you're going to hit me anyway, I'm, I, might, I might as well fight. If you're, you're going to hit me anyway, I'm going to hit you. Or I'm going to throw a punch. Or I'm going to get out of the way. Or I'm going to, I'm going to, because you've been training during the shutdown, everybody else is binge watching more shows on Netflix that have negative, they're feeding their mind garbage and trash. You're feeding your mind and your body spins. And you're feeding your mind and your body strike, 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 and using two by two. Or maybe you get this uh, band. It's one of my favorite things right here. By the way, if you're in shutdown or lockdown or whatever, and you can get a resistance band, even as small as this, and you just start you know, working and turn your thumbs back, and then whip that around the back and start punching and pushing, you don't need a lot of space to get a good workout. So you start taking some action your mind, and then you tell yourself, this is the thinking. You can think of all the negative things, but you also have the power, this is your superpower. You have all the power to think of all the positive things that can happen. And it's just a matter of turning the volume down on the garbage, which means stop reading it, stop watching it at night, stop listening to it, and start listening to yourself and say, you know, I'm gonna be a blessing to everybody I meet today. I'm gonna create massive value for anybody I meet today. I'm gonna smile at everybody I see today. I'm going to, Look and see where I can add value to anybody today. Anybody who's struggling, I want to be there. And I don't know if I can help or not, but if I can help, let me know how I can help. I'm going to throw my shoulders back, chin in, and throw a smile on. And I'm going to refuse to participate in all of the negativity that might be out there swirling. I'm not going to let it affect me. I'm not participating in this pandemic. Sorry. You know, I might get sick. I might, have, I might even have something called COVID and I'm going to uh, treat it. You know, I'm going to have the doctor give me the medicine to help me breathe, the, the steroids or whatever it is that I need, and I'm going to get through it. I'm going to take my vitamin D, take my zinc, and eat healthy and exercise and keep my mind positive and strong. And you have that ability just like I do. Everybody does. So you have to choose. And it's, and it's right thinking, right speaking, right action. That's a martial arts principle. Um, you either go this way or you go this way. You go, and it's your choice. It's your choice. But you have to take an action. First action, turn the volume down, which means if you find yourself going to those news apps every day and reading all of the stories, then stop. 
Thank you, Heather. I really appreciate that. Stop reading it. Just turn it off. In fact, if you don't see the news for the next four years, eight years, 20 years, you, it won't affect you. Not really. Not really. It'll just affect your happiness. What you will... Ne- if, a, if, a, <laughs> if a tsunami is coming, someone's going to smash your door. Get out. There's a tsunami. If there's a fire in your building, so get out. There's a fire. That's all you really need to know. If there's a war, you're going to know the big stuff. But reading the daily stuff, what might happen, is just going to scare you. And it's going to make you angry. And it's going to make you afraid. And it's, it's going to freeze you. And you're going to wait. You're going to wait for something that's never going to come. Or you take action. Start to walk in place. That's going to get your blood rate up. Or your heart rate up. Your blood's going to start to go. You're going to start to breathe a little bit more. That oxygen. This is, this is all science. I'm not making it up. It's going to get into your brain. The motion of your body is going to change your, how you feel emotionally. All of a sudden, when you take a deep breath, a lot of people who are depressed, angry, a lot of people who are consuming on their phone or their tablet all the time are like this. If you just do this with me, what is happening is your head is heavy, your shoulders roll forward, your rib cage constricts, and you're getting less oxygen. Now they know, again, science, I didn't make this up. All the science proves we know that even 10% deficit of oxygen for the average person causes symptoms that look like autism, cause massive depression because it's releasing uh, the, the chemicals that make you feel afraid, angry, nervous, alone, like, like you're the only person in the world. But if you take a deep breath, if you, you try it by taking a breath and filling those balloons up, filling them with air, filling your lungs with air. It forces your body to go more straight. When you do that, your eyes come up and you see the horizon. When you look down, this is why when I teach fighting, right? I teach you don't, don't ever look at the hips. Don't ever look good. Have a great workout. Don't make sure you sweat and you breathe heavy. Don't ever look at the body because if you're looking down, you'll never see that for one and you'll flinch. And two, when you look down, your peripheral vision goes from, let's see, I can see my fingers until here. Here's my peripheral vision. Everything from here to here, side to side. I can't see behind me, but I can see everything in front of me. As soon as I look down, it comes into about here. You just lose perspective. You don't see the bigger picture. It's physically impossible. This is not... uh, the secret, this isn't some kind of personal development stuff. This is true. So here's what you do. You start walking in place if that's your fitness level. Walking in place, no less than 30 seconds. And then reach. Put your hands here because when you hold your hands here, you release the uh, precursors, the chemicals that lean your body out and make you happy. So you're going to hold your hands here. Practice breathing. Deep. That's also gonna continue to get your heart rate up. You hold this position, and then I want you to reach to the sides, reach up, reach to the front, sides, up. This is basics, this is the basic level. This is if you are suffering from anxiety, depression, stress, all these things, or you just wanna feel really good. Make this your morning workout. 30 seconds breathing after 30 seconds walking. Walking's too easy. Jog, jogging's too easy. Run in place. They won't let you go outside. And then from here, 30 seconds is breathing. Think of this as chugong. And it is. This is a chugong move. From here, here, up, and then do this. And then reverse it. All of this is opening and closing your chest. It's forcing you like a billows. It's forcing more oxygen in. That oxygen gets in your brain. It gets in all of your muscles and it makes you feel better. It also heals things that are torn or stuck or whatever. It loosens them up. In your brain, have you ever seen stars? You get so angry, so mad, so nervous, so afraid. You've done, made a big mistake and then all of a sudden you start seeing stars. Yeah, that's called the solar plexus. Bone, you can feel it. Ah, that's the bone. Uh, 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 uh. That, when you have a little kid and you push on, that's where they breathe. 
strike that. Use these two big knuckles or use that staff right into there, into the groin, into the private parts. When you see stars, it's because you're not breathing. It's as simple as that. You see the stars because your brain is starving from oxygen. So when you start feeling yourself seeing the stars, put their hands out here. But you're not gonna be able to do that. You won't be able to get that deep breath unless you start by walking 30 seconds or jogging or running or bouncing. And it's as simple as that. Every single morning, and it takes you two minutes, you start your day that way and then you immediately go into your gratitude, gratitude meditation or prayer. I do a gratitude prayer to God because that's how I am. But my, my, I, and I, I start by saying, thank you for waking me up. Thanks that I'm on this side of the dirt and not that side. Thank you that I can still breathe, see, hear, smell, all that stuff. And then whatever the next is and the next is the next, all the you know, family. And, but you have to try to paint a picture in your head. That sets you up for the whole day. And then tell yourself, or pray, or however you want to say, today, I'm going to be a blessing to everybody, everybody. Yeah, hold on, Adrice, I'll grab them. Everybody I see today, I'm going to try to add as much value to other people as I can today. Think about helping someone else. And when you do that, it changes what's happening to you. If you wake up and you think about, how can I change today? How can I, how can I get more money today? How can I uh, get out of this situation? How can I help myself? How can I help myself? you'll never get it. It's like people who think about money all the time, they never get money. People who think about how can I serve other people all the time, it comes. It, the universe, God, whatever it is, it shows you. Hold on, let me grab that real quick. I, I figure Adrish is right. As long as I'm uh, bumping the gums, I might as well be doing something, right? Might as well be doing something while you're staying around doing nothing. Anybody know what that movie's from? Or uh, that's from a movie, all right. So here, palm in the middle, you warm up with a spin, palm down, and then you go up and down, and you have your figure eight. This is the figure eight. Now there's three ways to hold this. Here is for speed. It goes fast. The middle, that's for tricks. Or for uh, like changing hand positions, that kind of stuff, Bruce Lee stuff. Here, that's for strikes, for self-defense. And when you strike, if you strike and you stop, it comes back and hits your hand. So when you strike the chucks, always follow through, follow through. And as long as you have the correct angles coming down, what are the angles? They're exactly the same. Exactly the same as we did with the Joe staff. Keep them tight, fight from behind your stick. In this case, the nunchucks. From here to here, you're just bringing it back. Anyway, I'll wrap this up because I know you guys, you've been so patient with me this morning. Yeah, uh, T's exactly right. Oh, and that's something else I want to say. Thank you. Um, every year at Christmas time, when I had the big school in Ohio for 20 some years, whatever it was, I would sit down and I would write gratitude, I'd thank, thank you notes, thank you cards. And I would send them to every student. And basically, and, and I would personalize them. But, you know, and at a point I had over 300, so that was a lot of writing. But I'd, do, I'd spend a week to do it. And I had like a general message, you know, thank you so much for supporting me, for training with me, for listening to me talk all the time. But then I would say, you know, something that was personal to them when I could, when I could think of something. I could, you, don't, you can always think of something. But do that. If you get stuck and you're frustrated with what you see happening in the world, in your relationships, in your personal finances, sit down, take out a piece of paper, and write someone a note. Anybody. It doesn't matter. Even some stranger. You don't even have to give it to them. Um, you know, hey, thanks so much for smiling the other day. When I was walking by, I was in a, cra a crummy mood, and... <laughs> You went out of your way to be nice to me even though I wasn't nice to you because that happens. And do stuff like that. And if you um, want to really truly affect change in your world, remember Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world? That's what he's talking about. That's what he was talking about. He's not talking about 
going out and righting the wrongs and fighting the power and stopping the bad guys. He was saying, you need to start smiling. If you want to be, and, and try it. Everywhere you go today, smile at everybody. Not everybody's going to smile back, but some of them will. Yeah, it all, it all depends. Um, I, I agree a thousand percent, Muhammad. If you use uh, these, these are illegal. In a lot of states, in a lot of cities, in a lot of countries around the world, you cannot have these. These are effective, but they're also more likely to hit yourself with, and for um, they don't have the length advantage. Someone's got a knife, a knife could come to here. If they've got a machete, that comes to about here. Now, you know, you have to be really fast and know what you're doing. If you have the stick, <laughs> it's a no-brainer. If they have a pair of nunchucks and you have a staff, let them swing it all day long and you just go straight in and straight down, you don't have to do anything fancy. Self-defense has got to be practical. It's got to work first. It's got to be action-oriented, right? It can't be fancy. It's like nunchucks are motivation. That's how I see it. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Sensei Emmett. Um, I, I got your email. I haven't been able to respond yet, but I'm thinking about the date and the timing and if I can make that work. Sensei Emmett and I, if you haven't seen his, ch his channel yet, please go take a look. He's interviewing some really interesting, smart, brilliant martial artists um, on his channel. He's in Ireland. Uh, you have this reach advantage. That's what I was trying to show you. So with the staff, from here, it has to be practical. It has to work for self-defense. Walking stick, walking cane, uh, hiking stick, or the Joe, the Japanese Joe, the medium-sized staff, or a hanbo. Maybe you use the hanbo, the short one, and that. You're welcome. I appreciate um, This is a global community. We're all in this together. Like I said, I actually honestly do. Um, yeah, they're great. They're all fun to practice with. Learn everything. I honestly believe, like wake up in the morning, I say, how can I add as much value to other people as I can? Because I don't think if you wake up and you think about, what am I going to do today? How am I going to make it work? How am I going to do this? You have to do that a little bit. You can't just sit there like a lump on a log, as, the, as my dad always said, don't, don't be a lump on a log. But you have to, um, at some point, do, you, you, you got to get out of your own way. You, you have to stop thinking about yourself and look around and see, how can I help somebody else? The reason I like the staff so much is because it's basic, it's simple, and it doesn't take any flowery move or big move or complicated move for self-defense. The nunchucks, more complicated. Even the sword, more complicated. It's just a big stick. And you can find these anywhere. A branch from a tree, a sapling, a pipe, um, a broomstick. That's the most obvious one, right? Uh, sanding pole. When I was a kid, I grew up painting house uh, painter's pole, right? Or a sanding pole. For those of you guys who've ever done drywall work, you know about the sanding pole. And you have an immediate self-defense tool, something that is anywhere. Or like I said, walking stick, walking cane, hiking stick, uh, self-defense techniques with any of those are really practical, really effective. I appreciate you guys so much. And the donations really, really help. I can't tell you how much. The, it's, it's, it's about, like, like I'm never going to do, stop doing this. Even if, you, if, if I never made a dime, and I don't make a lot, so I have to be doing it out of passion. I truly, honestly want to spread. When I started doing this stuff online, yeah, I'll bet. When I first started doing this stuff online, my goal was to take everything that was given to me as a gift, all the martial arts learning that I had done over the years, all the gifts that all the other masters, instructors, training partners, students had given to me, and give them to you. And that, that, and it was, and I, I didn't even know there was monetization. I didn't, because I started in 2006. I didn't even, I mean, I didn't get serious until a few years ago, but I've been just slowly putting it up there. And when, when I teach in person, sometimes the students aren't as appreciative. I've got a bunch now who are, not a bunch, I've got seven, and they're very appreciative. But um, sometimes mommy is bringing the kid in because he's not listening in school or doesn't listen to daddy. I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to wipe anybody's nose. I have no interest in that, but I want this. I want this connection. I want this global virtual dojo. I want this idea that I can add some value to you. You add some value to me. We help somebody else. Somebody else is listening, watching. They don't make a comment, but they're still getting something out of it. 
and maybe a few days later something happens and they come back and they watch it again. That's all I care about. I don't want thousands and thousands of students who don't care or who are just there because mommy said, daddy said, the school teacher said, go see Mr. Matt because he can fix his ADHD. That happened to me for 20 some years. I, I had a third of my members were on the autism spectrum. Go see Mr. Matt because he, he can help your autistic children. And I love helping students. And a lot of them became black belts or anger problems or, or focus problems or discipline. But that's not what martial arts is to me. Martial arts can do those things, but it's a stick and he's got a knife and I'm going to stop him. It's got to be like that. It's got to be, martial arts has got to be practical. It's got to work. It's got to be honest. It can't be martial arts for better grades, martial arts for better person, social skills, life skills. Tired of that. that that's wrong anyway. That's, that's uh, you know, eating the, or drinking milk from the wrong side of the cow. <laughs> Picture that. <laughs> don't drink milk from the wrong side of the cow. Um, I don't want to do that. So we all have to, yeah, it is. We all, we all have to, we all have to go back to the basics. What is martial arts? It's fighting. It's punching, kicking, grappling. It's weapons. It's someone coming at you, trying to take something from you, your life, your dignity, your family, your stuff, and you stand your ground. You might move to the side. That'd be smart. But you stand your ground. You speak up for yourself. You start to learn how to fight. It builds your confidence. All the other stuff comes. Better grades, mommy, listen to mommy better, all that stuff. That comes with it. But it's, it's got to start with sweat and some bruises and some, some uh, tears and some broken bones from time to time. We got to do that. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, you were right, Adrish. Have a birthday again tomorrow, and I hopefully we'll see you. I'm not sure yet, but I really appreciate, again, all of the uh, super chats and the stickers. Those are, I just look at those as donations to keep this place going. We might not be in the same building, but we'll be somewhere. Thanks, Hank. 